Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Dylan. Yes, you're right. It's not just Hayden. I'm here to save you from the boredom that is constantly listening to that guy. Let's break it up a little bit. We're going to take a look at some maths questions today on the road to the sats to prepare ourselves. So let's take a look without further ado at what the mean average is. Now, if you're given a bunch of numbers, the mean average is going to be calculated in a way that you need to learn. Okay, so imagine that these are scores. We're playing some kind of game and someone gets 51 and they absolutely smash it. They win by a mile. But there is a team aspect to this game. And what you've got to do is take every individual score from each person. In this case, there are five scores. And then you want to find the average somewhere in the middle that represents what everyone got. So the way we do that is firstly, we need to count up how many data points we have. Like I said earlier, we have one, two, three, four, five scores. That's going to be really, really useful later on. We need to put a five here. Park it for a second, because the next thing we want to find out is the total. So if I were to add up all of these scores together, what would the total amount be? Now, always I'm looking for number ones to 10 to help me. So nine and 51, I'm going to match up. That makes a nice 60. And if I add seven to seven, because I know my doubles, seven and seven is 14. So seven and 17 is 10 more. That's going to give me 24. And look at that, the four matches up nicely with the six, which means that these three values here, 24 plus six are 30 in total. So we have 60 and 30. That means that all together, the score for the entire team was 90. Yes, one person got 51, someone else got six, but the total score was 90. When we have the total and we know how many data points there are, working out the mean average is very easy. What we have to do is take the total and divide it by how many data points there were. In this case, it's going to be 90 divided by five. You might be able to do it mentally, but there's nothing wrong with a little bus stop to help us. Fives into nine go once with four remaining. Fives into 40 go eight times. Therefore, the average score was 18. Now you'll notice something. No one actually scored 18. This isn't going to represent what someone got or what most people got, it's going to represent where the rough middle line is. So 18 is our average. In the SATS papers, we're very unlikely to see a question that just says, here are some numbers, what's the average? It's going to be baked in to a reasoning question just like this. So let's take a look. This table shows the distance that five friends travel to school each day. We've got Amina, William, Layla, Chen, and Dev, and they all go a certain distance with a decimal in kilometers. What is the mean distance they travel to school each day? Now, if we understand from earlier what the formula is and we've memorized it, it makes this much easier. So let's add them up. We have 1.8 plus, well, I'm going to look for number bonds to 10 to help me. I've got 3.2 here. So I know the 2 and the 8 make one whole kilometer. So when I'm adding these up, I know it's just going to be 5 altogether because that one exchanging over. So I can get rid of Amina and I can get rid of Layla and I'm on 5. Now, can I see any other number bonds? Yes, 2.4 and 1.6. I know the four and six make one kilometer. So in total, they're going to be four kilometers. So all together so far, I've got five plus four, which is nine. And all I've got left is Dev, who got 4.5. So nine plus 4.5, if I line up my decimal like this, the 0.5 is going to drop down. Nine plus four is 13. And I have my answer, right? Wrong, that is not the answer. And if you stopped here, you wouldn't even get one mark. This is a two mark question. And in SATS papers, if you have a two mark question, if you only do half of the question, you will get zero. Okay, not one part for one mark for what you did, you'll get zero. Because the only way to get one mark in a two mark question in the SATS is to do every single step, but make an arithmetic error somewhere. So now we've got 13.5 as the total. Remember, we have to divide by the number of data points. How many children were there? One, two, three, four, five. So we're going to take 13.5 now. And we're going to use bus stop method to divide it by five. Fives into one, nope. So that one goes over. Fives into 13, two fives are 10, and there's three remaining. Put that decimal place in. Fives into 35 goes seven. So the average distance is 2.7. You'll notice again, like earlier, no one actually uh, goes a distance of 2.7. That's not what the question's asking. It's what's the average? What's the uh, amount that's in the middle of all of those data points? as a rough guide as to what the average person would have to travel. Awesome, let's take a look at another one then. And you'll notice these are often embedded in tricky questions. This is one of the trickiest. This table shows how many people finished the New York Marathon in each of the first four decades it was held. 
what is the mean number of people so we need to know the mean who finish the marathon per decade and then round your answer to the nearest hundred so let's take a look here we have one two three four decades so we know we're going to be dividing by four that's going to be happening at the end what we have to do to start with is find the total of all of these four here let's start in the ones three plus two is five plus four is nine in the ones let's go to the tens now six plus three is nine plus two is eleven plus two is thirteen so we have thirteen there and the one goes over to the hundreds now we're looking at the hundreds column eight plus nine is seventeen plus four is twenty one plus eight is twenty nine plus the one is thirty so the three goes over to the thousands now in the thousands column we have four plus zero plus two plus zero that's six plus the three down here is nine in the thousands column and then moving over again into the ten thousands column this time two plus seven is nine then plus eight is seventeen and then we're going to add on a five there seventeen plus five is 22 there's nothing to exchange so we just write down 22 like that and then finally we're in the hundred thousands column uh, none in the first one one plus two plus three is six plus the two down there is eight so we have a total number of people we finished as 80 sorry 829,039 and then we have to divide that by four so we're going to whack it over here i'm going to do the bus stop method and you'll notice it's going to not give me a whole number because it ends with a nine but that's fine fours into eight go twice fours into two no with two remaining fours into 29 how close can we get well seven fours are 28 there's one left over fours into 10 goes twice with two remaining fours into 23 that's five times because that's 20 with three left over and fours into 39 nine fours are 36 and there's three left over which will give us 0.75 now we can prove that if we wanted to we do three here and then we've got two remaining but it is 0.75 awesome we've done honestly most of the hard work here but the question could have stopped there and been two marks but it's not it's a three mark question because then we've got to round it to the nearest hundred and this is what the sats does it embeds mean average into a question when you have to do something else as well so rounding this number here to the nearest hundred we're going to get uh two hundreds and we need to think are we rounding up or down well that's a five and a ten so we're going to round up and we get two uh, sorry we get 207,000 and not 200 we round up 300 people and that's going to get you all three marks okay so you have to be really on the ball when we get a mean average question it's usually just part of the bigger picture let's take a look at this one then slightly more simple two marks straight up what is the mean maximum temperature to one decimal place we've got a graph here that gives us the maximum temperature on each day We've got to use our formula from earlier, which is the total divided by how many data points there are. At this point, feel free to pause the video and see if you can calculate it yourself. And once you've done that, let's take a look at how to solve it. So let's add these up. As always, I'm looking for number bonds just to help me slightly. 11.9 and 8.1. Cool. 11 plus 8 is 19. And then the 9 and the 1 in the decimal place makes one whole. So that's going to give us 20. So I'm going to get rid of that. And now I've got 20. 9.3 plus 11.8 plus 12.4 there's nothing really here that goes together so i'm just going to match up 11.8 uh, 11 and 12.4 if we add those up and kind of, by the way guys you should be using these squares as much as possible 11.8 plus 12.4 you can just use column method just to ensure that you get the answer right 1 plus 2 plus 1 is 4 and then we have 2 there so you have 24.2 and we've added up these two and then we're going to add i'm going to add the 9.3 straight on 9.3 so we get point here with 5, 4 plus 9 is going to be 13, and 2 plus 1 is 3. 33.5 for those three, plus the original 20 we had, that gives us 53.5. Stop there, and we get how many marks? You should be shouting at me, zero, because we haven't got every step down. Next, we're going to divide it by how many data points there were. There were five days recorded. Fives into five go once, fives into three don't. Put the decimal up, the three goes over to 35. Uh, to make 35 rather fives into 35 are seven times the average maximum temperature was 10.7 and again just to prove to you none of the actual temperatures were 10.7 but that is our average in the middle let's do one more together here megan goes on a walking holiday for five days it's always five it seems very interesting the table shows how far she walked on the first four days oh on the first four so you got to read this question really carefully you can't just see five and think oh yeah divide by five friday is the last day she wants to increase her average to 17 kilometers. How many kilometers must she walk on Friday? Oh, this is the ultimate tricky mean question because it's working 
backwards, okay? She wants her average to be 17 kilometers when she's walked on the fifth day. So let's look at the formula. We're going to have total divided by five, because it's gonna be five days, equals 17 kilometers. So to work backwards and figure out what must Friday be, we need to know what her total has to be, and we're gonna get there by using the inverse. The total divided by five is 17. So if I use the inverse, I can take my 17 kilometers, I can then times it by five, and that will give me the total. I'm working backwards. This is basically algebra as well. 17 multiplied by five. Well, why don't we just put it into short division just to make sure? That's my best advice always. Seven fives are 35. Five times one is five plus three is eight. So that's 85. I want the total kilometers walked to be 85 kilometers. So how do we work out now what Friday must be? Well, we're gonna add up how far she has walked in the first four days. So 13 plus 13, that's gonna be 26. 26 plus 14, that's gonna give me 40. And then 40 plus 23, that's gonna give me 63 kilometers. She has walked 63 kilometers on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday all together, and she needs the total to get to 85 kilometers. So if I were to draw a bar model like this, so far she has walked 63 kilometers, she wants to walk over the five days. We know the total has to be 85. That gives us 17 as the mean average. So what is the missing step here to make up to 85? So you have to do now 85, take away 63. The math isn't too tricky, but getting there and knowing what to do is, okay? This is much harder. 85 take away uh, 63, five take away three is two. Eight take away six is two. So we have 22 here. And this, look, that's a typo. Shouldn't be kilograms there should be km. You would not be penalized for that if that ever happened in the test. This is the ultimate version of answering a mean average question because it makes you show how much you understand what mean average is. It makes you work backwards and fill in a data point. Very tricky indeed. So with that in mind, this is your job. The average points total of four football teams is 75. Team one has 68, team two has 73, team three has 76, so how many points must team four have to make the average 75? Very similar to the last one, you've got to work backwards, you've got to really understand what mean average is, and if you know the answer, whack it down in the comments down below, and I will see you next time.